I think it's a very, very critical and an important afternoon which we are talking about today. And especially from friends all over, we have friends from Norway, we have specialists from other countries who joined us. And the reason why I say it is so important is because the discussion this afternoon is not a discussion of choices. It's a discussion which is an imperative. I mean, think about it. You saw the news last night in India. You're looking at floods in New York and New Jersey. Everything submerged under the water. And it's not just that news, which is you see this story repeated endlessly across the world in the past few months, which we've seen. It basically brings us to one very critical point, that growth today cannot be any other color but green. And it has to be sustained. There is no other choice, not just for our next generations, but ourselves too. It's moving much faster than we have ever envisaged. And the good thing today is, and this is where I see the discussion points which are happening today, that it has now taken the center stage in the room today as a discussion in all our lives and in all our plans as we are going forward with it. Uh, it was just mentioned to you that just to give you a perspective about Invest India so you'll have an idea where my brief remarks are going to be originating from. Uh, we are the uh, National Investment Promotion and Facilitation Agency. That means we are the single point of contact where we work very closely with investors from across the globe who are looking at opportunities in India work closely with them on their India plans and their opportunities, helping them with all the policy initiatives and approvals which are required. And as a part of that, we also work very closely within the system as the government to see what we can get as stakeholder inputs on creating of new policies and the creation of the ecosystem, which is to take forward the measures which the government wants to focus on. The second vertical which we work very closely and which we are responsible for is Startup India. And you know that is one of the biggest movements which has started in India ever since the Honorable Prime Minister launched it in January 2016. That means we are a startup nation in many ways. And just to put it in perspective for you, in a short period of 60 months, we are number three in the world in number of unicorns, we are number two in the world in number of startups, we are number one in the world with new startups adding every day. In fact, what was very exciting is that this year, one out of every 10 unicorns in the world has been born in India. In, uh, we've added about, what, 26 unicorns this year, and we have a total close to a head of 63, and the number is increasing much faster at a pace than we had envisaged. There is a reason why I'm mentioning all these things, and I will bring them back into my comments when I share with you later. And the third vertical which we work on is the Honorable Prime Minister's Science and Technology Initiative under Professor Vijay Raghavan, and he will also be speaking to all of you to share. So that entire initiative on innovation, R&D, etc., and fast tracking and executing it and seeing how we can get the ecosystem going is also where the team is focusing on and working very closely to make that happen. So giving that perspective, let me just share my brief comments with you into three categories. The first is, as I said, it's an imperative which we have to deal with today. But what is interesting and which is happening in India and which is what makes India stand out in this field is the pace at which we are adopting and adapting to this technology. And it starts right from the top, even on the 15th of August on our Independence Day, the Honorable Prime Minister launched the National Hydrogen Mission. It is actually a mission status which has been accorded and the focus of the government from the highest offices. Now, why is that important? The reason why we've been able to adopt and adapt to it at a much faster pace than probably many other economies in the world is because it is both top down and bottom up. Top down because you have the highest office in the land which is created and mentioned and focused on it as a mission. And that is where we are seeing hydrogen and even look at the points which you will all have heard about the renewable power story of India. We're looking at 450 uh, gigawatts by 2030 in the decade, but even the milestones which were set for us at the beginning of the past three or four years, the country has been moving so fast ahead of them, and you, I'm sure everybody has shared those numbers with you, that they constantly got it, uh, kept getting revised onto a more optimistic level. That is the pace at which India is moving and all these things. 
and it has been driven right from the top. The ability to facilitate the entire ecosystem to make this happen as a reality. And that means that there is a 360 approach to it. And I will mention a little about that. But the other element to it is that it's also a very strong bottom-up approach. If you look at our society per se, it's not just adoption of technology, but creating climate as a center point and sustainability as a center point in our daily lives, be it waste to wealth, or be it maximum utilization of the limited resources. Everything is focused towards that sustainability. And that is what helps in this entire objective. And when I talk about the entire ecosystem, that how it has been done in a 360 manner, the reason why I say that is that it has been looked at from all possible complementing sectors which get involved in this. Fertilizer production, steel production, refining, oil refining, or mobility. Every part of it, and you know, for example, the government has recently also introduced a number of uh, production-linked incentive schemes, uh, where a number which is also a lot to do with renewable power or maybe battery requirements which are there. All these are working towards encouraging industry in a sustainable manner to come forth and increase their share and presence in the country. Apart from the fact that they're looking at India and it's right at the Sarge to now looking at making India as one of the manufacturing hubs of the world. And we are seeing a tremendous response to these policies and these incentive schemes which have been announced during the past six months, even in the midst of the lockdown, the government was functioning full steam. The responses which I have seen within my own team to this has brought us to the point and has given me the confidence that each of these milestones which has been set for us will be really accomplished, not just within the time, but maybe a bit earlier. I mean, look at the milestone which was set up by the Paris Agreement for, COP, for the G21. India probably is the only country which is ahead of the milestones which are required. And that is again all because it is such a focused effort. And what I must say here is, the other element which we are seeing a lot coming in is the entire supply chain development in this industry. Be it solar, Tanakasan mentioned about it, be it hydrogen, you will hear stories about some of the private sector companies which are coming in and going through the entire life chain and the product life cycle change to make it a comprehensive 360 product offering. And I think these are critical if you have to create a position of being a market leader. And also look at it from the fact that this is the fastest growing large economy on the planet. The IMF itself has said that we are looking at nine and a half, ten percent If we look at the statistics which have come to us for this quarter, for the last quarter, they are far more encouraging than anybody had ever envisaged. And we are looking at a much sharper V coming back and into a position yet again to commence the position where we left off last March 2020 when this pandemic began as being the fastest growing large economy and taking back that position the moment we move out of this pandemic, nine and a half, ten percent, whatever that number be, as the IMF is projecting and many others. In fact, what was very encouraging is when I was looking at the Nomura uh, Business Research Index, the index today and the base year for them is uh, March or February 2020. And uh, the last month that index was above the February 2020 number, which actually showing that we moved much beyond where we were in a pre-position before the pandemic began. And why does that become important? Because it is not just going to be the fastest growing large economy, but it will also be the economy or a system or a society or a country with the highest human resources. By 2025, 26, we will be 1.5 billion. So if we do not take on this position of creating green as the major color and keeping ourselves sustainable, it is going to be the most critical element. And that is where is the stated objective of the Honorable Prime Minister that our growth will be green, our growth will be sustainable. And that is where we are seeing the adoption 
and the ecosystem being created where technologies and this adoption of the color green is happening at a very fast pace. The second point which I wanted to mention, what is also helping in this innovation, in this entire adoption, is the innovation of India. You see, one of the most interesting elements of Indian innovation and startup is one, its strength in frugal innovation. But the second, its very inherent strength of our MSMEs and our entrepreneurs on their ability to pivot business models and to be nimble in their operations. So nimble, ability to pivot business models and frugal innovation. These three bringing it together are the recipe, which is where we are seeing, seeing innovation happen on a very fast track. I mentioned to you something about the unicorns and the sunicorns, but that doesn't only is the only part of the story. The real other interesting part of the story is, so you know India is, uh, has 739 geographic districts, and they are also administrative districts. In today, over 85% of these districts, I have a startup which is registered with the government of India. And what that makes it interesting is that the solutions which these startups are bringing are solutions from a rural aspect, from a semi-urban aspect, from a big city. These are solutions which are applicable not just to India, but over across the entire globe. And these are solutions which are easily executable, easily scalable, and extremely economic. And that is where the strength of this entire innovation element comes in. And that is what again brings us back to the point on how fast adoption is happening in the Indian context, where we are moving as fast as possible and probably leading in many ways onto the process of sustainability and green uh, growth, including the hydrogen side of it, where we are seeing a tremendous level of interest and support coming in. And one of the very interesting elements on that entire innovation and adoption is what Professor Rivijay Raghavan will also be uh, speaking to all of you, is the program called AGNI, A-G-N-I-I, the Accelerated Growth of New India Innovation. So, you know, this has been a very interesting experience for our team to work on because there is a significant level of R&D activity happening across the country. In fact, what you would see is in the past 60 months, we've had over a thousand MNC R&D centers opening in India. Today, India is the number one destination for R&D centers of MNCs outside of their headquarters. And there is some very interesting research which is happening right across, not just in the MNC space, but in our academia or even in our private sector. You know, the IIT Bombay, for example, is working on a viable solution to lower the energy and the material cost and improve the hydrogen production rate. And the system is already it's going to require 19% less energy and the hydrogen production has increased three times. We also have an Agarka Research Institute where the first of its kind technology to generate hydrogen directly from agriculture residue to power fuel. We also have the OSIS Bio, you know, they are producing biohydrogen from wastewater. I mean, these are very interesting solutions which are coming up. And what this program is doing under the principal scientific advisor is picking up all this research which is happening both in the private and the public space and fast tracking it to commercialization. And this is a program which is gathering a lot of momentum and has become very robust. And we are having a number of private companies and government entities bringing in challenge statements, getting in solutions, and on a fast rate, adopting these new technologies which are coming in to make it all happen so fast. So that is the second point which I wanted to mention, that why the adoption of these technologies is becoming faster is again because of another concerted effort by the government, which is again to bring in these new technologies, to encourage the R&D, and to fast track it to execution. My last point. And I think one of the most critical points, and I suspect I would always say one of the most critical, is because of my previous life as a private equity investor and a banker, is financing. One of the most interesting elements of this R&D, of this innovation, of creating this ecosystem, of the ability to join the dots together to creating a fast tracking of execution, is that you're seeing, one, the cost of these of this kind of power and of green power and sustainability 
becoming much lower. In fact, it is now competitive to many traditional forms of fuel and is now becoming the preferred form of uh, we are, for, for example, one of the cheapest where solar and wind power is concerned and the lowest cost in India. And similarly, we are seeing other elements of power and we will see the same happening with hydrogen. I know the cost to maybe be a little higher, but the moment you get scale, and that is one of the biggest things of the Indian economy, it provides you the scale. And the scale provides you the economies, and the economies provide you with the competitive edge. And add to that is the R&D and the technology bit. That makes it into the successful magic formula to make it happen further. But what's interesting from my perspective, I mentioned to you that Invest India is also the National Investment Promotion and Facilitation Agency. And you know this year we got, uh, we closed our financial year, which we closed on, um, on the 31st of March. Last year, India got the highest FDI ever in its history. We crossed $81 billion. And what was interesting is it was happening at a time when the country, well, not just India, but virtually the entire world was in a lockdown. And it also happened at a time, very interestingly, where world FDI, global FDI, fell by 35 to 40 percent. India was one of the very few two or three countries which increased its stake of our FDI. In fact, as a global FDI positioning, we moved from number 10 to number 5. That was leapfrog within one year itself. But the other interesting element of this 81 plus billion, it came from 89 countries. That means we have a larger number of countries which are today have a greater trust in the story of India and the strength of India going forward. But more interestingly, it came across 63 sectors. The opportunity space available in India across all sectors is now extremely promising. And the reason being that India is at one of its most interesting inflection points of its history, where we are seeing a transformative change at probably one of the fastest scales ever in pace and in scale in our history. And that is across all elements of our, be it society, economics, quality, every element of it. There is singularity coming into it, which is leading to this distinct change. And within this change, what we are seeing is the focus on green and sustainable development. And I've been repeating that right through. And when I told you that I got that $81.7 billion as FDI, let me also mention to you, green energy and sustainable energy is in the top five sectors of that FDI input. The world now is working with us on this opportunity. And we are partnering with them to get solutions, not just for our own selves, but to create the best solutions which we can for the entire world. So with that, I think this is a story which has just begun, just like the story of India and the new India, and the new India which you will see going forward, and the new India which has been totally propelled by a vision of the Honorable Prime Minister. You will see it as an India which stands up to the world as an example for sustainability and for its green growth and development. With that, let me take it back to you, ma'am, and thank you everyone for your time and for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.